that's on page 10 of the standard this morning. Defiance by irrigation peers triggers major reshuffle. This also begins on the front page. And the headline there is why Uhuru reshuffled his principal secretaries. Now, as you know, 12 principal secretaries were reshuffled by President Uhuru Kenyatta. But what caught the eye of Kenyans is the fact that four of those principal secretaries have been adversely named in corruption scandals. Among them is uh, now former um, health PS Nicholas Muraguri. And this has been very controversial. Um, let's begin with you, Victor. The very fact that um, four of them have been named in corruption scandals in their previous ministries. Those scandals are, are yet to be investigated to completion and then have now been moved to other dockets. Your thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, our country should come up with a mechanism on uh, how to deal with corruption. If one is named uh, on a, a scandal, he or she should carry his own cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And I think the president should crack the whip on those who, the, those who are corrupt in this country. Right. I mean, Caroline, this has elicited a lot of reactions as to the manner in which it was handled, as to the manner in which the president is also handling corruption. Uh, was this the right way to do this? Um, I'd personally like to say, as we've seen in countries that are more developed than us, mm -hmm. if you have a, a corruption scandal, it is only right for you to step down. If you don't step down, it is up to our excellency to actually ask these people to step down to during investigations. Mm -hmm. And I actually believe that if truly our president does want to win these upcoming elections, I believe getting out people who are corrupt out of the system to give leeway for investigations to happen, for things to... Because if I see, for instance, my, former, my, my colleague who's a PS, he's, he's corrupt and stealing, and there's no mechanism to actually uh, put him behind bars or to get evidence or anything. Mm -hmm. So now it, it has become rampant because there are no consequences to actions. So there are actually no consequences to corrupt people in this country. And we see a lot of them even actually running for political positions. And lo and behold, they may actually win these elections. Mm -hmm. But what is the message that we are telling our young people? That actually you can become a PS, you can become a CS, you can steal, and then life still will become beautiful mm -hmm. for there you. Are no and there are no consequences to the actions of corruption. And until we start behaving like countries like China, where if you dare steal a coin, you know, you're put behind bars, you can be executed, and then still we put in stringent measures to people who are corrupt, then even those institutions that we're talking about, our education system, our health system, our land system, I mean, it is shocking that, is it 900 billion has been put in the budget for the land ministry to be digitalized? Mm -hmm. 900 billion, a whole hooping, you know, why is it being digitalized? It's because there's so much corruption in the lands ministry. So until these people are put out of the system, actually they face the consequences, not just told to go home, but actually face the consequences and other people with clean records put in place, then we will, it will send a clear cut message across mm -hmm. the entire board of mm -hmm. leadership in this mm -hmm. and nation. And Francis, of course, uh, the argument for most of these who have been embroiled in corruption scandals and still running for political office um, or elective office or public office has been that there hasn't been any sufficient evidence to tie them down to their respective um, corruption cases. Is that, first of all, a substantive argument for them to still assume office. And then secondly, when it comes to the issue of um, Nicholas Muraguri, here we are, like Caroline has said, um, wanton corruption in the Ministry of Lands. And this is, how we want, this is why we want it to be digitalized. But we're moving a indiv an individual suspected of corruption in one ministry and moving them to another ministry without that case having come to completion. First of all, um I would not want to speculate the, 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 the real and the dominant reason as to why the president decided mm -hmm. to do the reshuffle because it is his prerogative as a president to be able to reshuffle the same people he appointed. And when they are signing their agreement with the employer, they say that they can be shifted to any ministry. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to speculate that. But I would also want to assert that it, uh, you know, no leader, no political leader plans to lose an election. So you can be sure, uh, I, I, you know, this is alluding to what my sister said, that uh, if the president wants to win the election, blah, 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 he has to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he won't win. He cannot be planning to lose an election. Right. So, and I would imagine he's doing it in, his best, in the best interest of his winning and in the best interest of his country. So, but I want to say 
you know, this issue of when you are named, you stepped aside. You know, it depends who is naming you and for what reason. Because Kenyans are very good in naming each other. Mm -hmm. But you realize as soon as you're named, there's always, always that question of integrity among Kenyans themselves. Yes, of course, the, the, it's not an issue of integrity. It's the aspect of reputation. Uh -huh. The reputation that you create for the government. And, and, and to me, even the fact that, uh, you know, you, 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 we are saying this one steps aside, we bring another one. Now, what is the measure of that other one who is coming in? Because I think it is bothering all of us. There is a problem in this country mm -hmm. in terms of integrity. And it is, it is said, somebody once said that uh, some people have never been corrupt because they have never gotten an opportunity to be corrupt. So I, I think we need to overhaul our mindset, our hearts, and, and our attitudes mm -hmm. towards public resources. But there are very few Kenyans who would stand and say, I, am, I have the integrity that is required. Mm -hmm. required. But that does not mean that we condone people with corruption practices. To me, even before you are sacked, you should be able to consider sacking yourself. And what we should do as a country, somebody say, the reason as to why you have so many traffic offenders is because the punishment is so uh, insignificant uh -huh. that people think that they can get away with it. But if you made the penalty to be unproportional, to the crime you have committed, where somebody would say, I think it's unfair. The, 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 the punishment you are giving me is so high considered to the crime I've committed. Mm -hmm. That is the time Kenyans will stop breaking law. Where you actually fear breaking the law, where the Chinese, the punishment is to hang. So they don't even wait for the government to hang them. They mm -hmm. hang themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to consider what kind of punishment are we giving to people so that we are not, we are not arresting people to put in what we should focus as a country is the deterrent measures. We need to make sure that we have enough deterrent measures so that people will be able to self-drive themselves into integrity mm -hmm. as opposed to being forced to go to integrity. Right. Yes. I mean, and Victor, you, you're running for the Kibra parliamentary seat. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, talk of corruption. So anybody who's running for elective seat, um, I would imagine should have some sort of solution towards corruption. What do you think we should do? What direction should we go to solve this? Just like I had said earlier on, the government should come up with a mechanism of uh, dealing with these corruption issues. First of all, when uh, you've been named as a corrupt, uh, let's say, corrupt official, mm -hmm. the first thing to do, you should just step down and pave way for the investigations. Mm -hmm. because uh, b because when, when you are still in power, you might use the, the powers to somehow to influence the ongoing investigations. So for me, one of the ways is to step down and you pave way for investigations. Mm -hmm. but, and, and clearly, it's not, it's not very easy to step down because uh, nobody ever seems to want to do it. But let's move away from that for a second, even as we went